I've started posting recently on X and I've been getting a lot of traction with these mid journey images. And I mean, definitely follow me there because I share tips and I share prompts and uh, you can even message me, talk to me and stuff along those lines and check out some of the progress that I've been making. But just as an example, you can see some of these visuals that obviously have minor details here and there, but most of the stuff is mid journey generated like the visuals and then I'm masking them and uh, adding some effects but getting a lot of traction, 155 likes, 55 likes on this one that I just spent like I, I think one or two hours doing yesterday uh, or something along those lines. Very similarly, this one with just poses two images of a 404 page that I'm thinking about and it's getting a lot of traction, 426 likes, 305 likes on this one. Whereas there isn't really much in terms of UI in there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's really easy to generate something like this. But if you actually go to the chat, like everyone's asking, hey, give us the prompt, give us the prompt, like where is the prompt and stuff along those lines, and they're excited about it. But you don't even need a prompt to generate something like this. And that's what I'm going to be showing you. And I'm going to be teaching you how to use mid journey to create really awesome UX and UI, or let's say not UX necessarily, UI visuals and designs and stuff along those lines or elements like this. This particular globe, this also got a lot of likes. This globe was generated using Mid Journey and it was animated using Luma. So let's say if we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do a tutorial on Mid Journey and I'm actually planning on doing a playlist where we go deeper into Mid Journey and I teach you how to use it. If I get a lot of likes and traction on this particular video, it depends if users actually want to see it or not. So generally when you land on Mid Journey, you see something like this. Obviously you're not gonna be on the likes uh, tab, you're gonna be on the random tab, I think, on the explore page. I'm just showing this one because it just has some of the images that I've liked but you can check out some of those other tabs as well. I don't necessarily wanna show them because of certain uh, reasons, because it may contain images that I do not want to display on my channel. So when you're on the random hot top or likes, any of this particular explore page, you can just click on the image. You can see the prompt that the person has used to actually generate an image like this. You can just click on this prompt and it's gonna go at the top. If you want to use this image as a prompt, you can just drag and drop the image as well. And it's gonna use this particular style or image as a prompt. So you can choose, like there are three icons here. Let me just zoom in. So this first icon actually says that you want to use this image as a prompt. The second one allows you to use the style reference. So for example, I can, create something using this style, but I can have a completely different thing. And I can use this person thing as well. It's gonna allow you to use this character as a reference. But usually people are using the SREF or the style reference, or they're using the image as a prompt. You can also use shift to actually use both the image reference and the style reference, or even the third one, the character reference. But let's say I can just ask, I can say, I wanna use this prompt and I wanna go ahead and do something with it. You can actually use these three buttons at the bottom right as well to generate something. So that's generally what the Explore tab is gonna look like and you can do the same thing that we're doing here with any other image as well. Now let's say if I wanted to generate something else with this particular style reference or image, let's go ahead and actually choose style. Okay, style is chosen and we're just gonna say, okay, a surreal Christmas tree. We don't really want Christmas tree. We maybe want a maybe we want a surreal tesseract using this particular style, ref style reference. So once you actually generate something, there are a few things that you need to know before you actually start generating. The first thing that is really important is when you actually go to your subscription, you have a bunch of subscription details here that I just want you to understand first. The main thing is you have your fast hours and this is your most important resource on mid journey because it allows you to generate things really fast. How do you actually increase these or spend them? You can obviously get uh, higher level plans or you can actually enable personalization and you can go to the personalization page to actually personalize things. But as you can see, we're just back to the create page and our Tesseract has been generated. Now, whenever you generate something and it's using that particular style, the Christmas tree style that we actually had there and it's generating something incredibly awesome and then we can tweak it. Before I go in there, I do wanna talk about what do you actually need to know when you're generating something. So once you're, when you're generating something, you obviously have a description at the top, but you have some filters or details on the right. Now you first of all decide whether this image is going to be portrait, is it going to be square, is it going to be landscape? You can also choose <clears throat> the aspect ratio directly from here as well. I would probably suggest just stick with square for now. And when you get into the flow or when you like a certain image, you can convert that into landscape or portrait afterwards as well. 
Um, the other thing that we have here on the right is stylization, weirdness, and variety. What this basically means is stylization means how strongly uh, the aesthetics are, mid journey aesthetics are actually going to be influenced. So if this is less, it's going to respect your prompt a lot more. If this is more, then uh, it's not going to respect your prompt as much, but it rather it's going to uh, just vary the images quite a lot um, from the prompt. As you can see, obviously we have some of these things listed out as well and you can read them. The weirdness is like, again, if you ask it to generate a person, if it's zero, it's gonna generate it pretty well. But if you actually increase the weirdness quite a lot, it's just gonna be like really different. So if you were to actually do the same thing, like I am just gonna bump up this weirdness and I'm gonna go ahead and actually generate the same thing again. And let's see what happens. Now we're gonna have it running in the background while we discuss some of these other things as well. So we have our mode of standard and raw. You don't have to worry about it. Just basically go ahead and use standard, use the latest version. You don't have to go back to the other versions as well. On the personalization, if you have personalization turned on, which we can talk about later as well, you can turn that off or on or off and it's gonna respect the, the style that you actually prefer. Uh, the variety obviously talks about like when you actually generate the four images that are here, like how much do they vary between each other? Are they going to be very different? Are they going to be close to each other? Or are they just going to be uh, extremely different? So you can probably choose a variety of 10. The weirdness, I would probably prefer to have it pretty much zero or maybe 100 at max or something along those lines. That's just my way of working, but you can experiment with these things. And the stylization in my opinion, can be 100 as well. So you can just reset these. Obviously, variety, you can increase this. When you're exploring certain things, the variety needs to be up because you're not really sure what you actually want to do. But as soon as you actually get an idea of what you want, then you can use the image reference and you can use the prompt and decrease the variety to fine tweak the images. That's what you can do. The speed, if you use fast, then it's gonna use your fast hours. If you use turbo, it's gonna use your fast hours, the ones that you have actually in your subscription twice as much, but it's gonna be really fast. But I would say for most of the stuff, you can actually just go with relax and that's gonna be fine if you're not really in a hurry and you can do something else as well and play around with things. So that's that. And then here on the create page, you can see some of the other things that you've basically generated as well. <clears throat> Now, as an example, a lot of people are confused when they see something like this. Let's go to a page like this, for example. A lot of people are like really impressed with this monolith and they want to know how to I actually generate this. And I think I did a demo here on ChatGPT. You can just use ChatGPT to generate it. I asked it just something simple. Use the mid journey uh, prompt generator bot. You can actually find that in the bots. Okay, so I just asked it to give me a prompt for a dark monolith like this, like in the Space Odyssey, standing front facing, surrounded by purple smoke and in light and in space. So I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it again here so you can see what it actually generates. And it's gonna give me a really nice prompt that I can then use to generate my mid journey images. So I'm gonna say, okay, go ahead and actually uh, access the API that's gonna allow you to generate this particular prompt and it's giving me something like this, okay? And it's giving me a bunch of prompts and I can ask it to give me something else as well. The aspect ratio and the version is not necessary to paste back because you're already controlling that in the filters that you have here at the top. So what I'm gonna do for this particular video is I'm just gonna speed this up so you can see it just for my subscribers. So as you can see, it generated something like this. Now, I went ahead and said weird 3000, and now it's generating something that completely does not even resemble the thing that I actually wanted it to generate. So weirdness, definitely keep it low. That's not something that you should concern yourself with. And I'm gonna show you this, these particular images that it actually generated. Now, as you can see, I did not even type this particular prompt out. Where was this prompt? I did not type this prompt out. I did not even use this image as a reference. I just went ahead and described this image in a very simple manner, and it's giving me something like this. Is this amazing or what? I mean, some people can even argue that this image is even better than this one, quite possibly. And then I can go ahead and I can go ahead and let's say use this particular image and I can describe something and I can say, okay, this particular prompt is perfectly fine, but I don't want it in a vast starry space or maybe in a vast starry space is fine. Rather, I want it on a vast starry space on a uh, barren planet with rocks at the ground with distant galaxies and whatever it is that we just talked about. 
Now, as you can see, I'm in the relax mode and let's just see how quickly the relax mode actually generates. I think, as I mentioned previously, it wasn't generating because of the proxy issue. Uh, but now, as you can see, it's not really that slow. So I would highly recommend that when you're usually working normally, it's, it's, you don't really have a strong need for something like that. Just go ahead and actually generate something using like uh, using the relax mode and it's going to be perfectly fine. Now, I went ahead and just modified that particular prompt. And this is amazing. This is pretty much amazing. Like it's giving me the thing that I actually just asked it and I can decide if I want to remove the galaxy or if I want to do something else. Once you actually get an image like this, there are certain other things that you can actually do with it. So once you open an image, let's have a look at what we have on the right. So on the right, obviously if you scroll down, up and down on the right, you can actually go back and forth on some of the images that you've generated. I mean, these are pretty awesome images and we can even use them in a landing page design or something. But anyways, we can actually just go back here, see if all the settings are okay, these are fine. What are some of these actions? Well, variations we've already mentioned. Uh, I think I haven't mentioned them. So if you want to, if you haven't finalized on an image and you wanna try different variations of the same image, you can just click on variation and you can say, I wanna have strong variations. It's gonna vary, create variations of this image that are different from this image. Uh, now you can see subtle and it's gonna do some subtle variations, but strong is obviously the way to go if you're exploring different ideas. Upscaling allows you to obviously scale the image. Currently by default, most of these images I think are 1024 by 1024 pixels. If you upscale it, it's gonna be 2X of that. In the remix, we can remix this. We can say, I wanna use this, everything that's here, and I just wanna have subtle remixes. And if I de do that, it's just basically gonna add all of these things here. Then I can choose to change certain things in this prompt and it's gonna variate, uh, create a remix of this particular one. And I can do remix strong and stuff along those lines, but I don't think that's necessary. You can do panning, like for example, if I wanna see more of the top section, I can just say I wanna pan this whole thing a bit at the bottom and it's gonna give me more at the top. I can zoom in, zoom out, um, like zoom in to the image, zoom out as well by going to the editor and we can talk about that. And very similarly, we have some of the use prompts here. Now you may actually see this model and you may see, hey, I don't see all of those options. So you can click on more options and you can enable the options from here. If you disable them, like for example, zooming in my opinion is useless. Um, this use and prompt, maybe it's fine. Panning I think is also useless as well. We can probably remove that. Remix, in my opinion, is also not really that helpful. If you wanna keep Remix, you can, but that's just enabling the options that are present here. In the editor is, this is the basic editor. This is not the advanced editor. We can do the advanced editor separately, but what this allows you to do it, it allows you to change the aspect ratio. For example, I can make this aspect ratio like this and I can submit and it's gonna give me that larger image. I can scale this image slightly at the bottom as well. Let's just do that and submit. So we have that at the back going as well. We can erase certain parts of the image. I can say, I wanna erase this. And if I click on submit, it's basically gonna erase that portion and stuff along those lines. So that's what this, allows us to do. Now let's actually check out some of the variations that we generated of this image. I mean, is this insane or what? This looks pretty freaking remarkable, right? I mean, mesmerizing in my opinion. And then we can also see uh, what these other panning things actually do um, and the results that we get. Now, one thing that I actually have to mention is when you're creating images or when you're creating variations or when you're generating images from scratch, the relax mode works pretty much very similar to fast. So never ever, I would say for the most part, use fast, unless obviously there's a heavy load on the system and you need something really fast, then you can fa use fast or turbo. But for something like this, where we're doing, let's say panning or we're editing and expanding and upscaling, uh, the, the normal variation, which is the relaxed variation for the speed just does not work really fast and you have to wait a lot to actually get something there. So that's just something that we have to wait for and I'm just gonna speed this video till we actually get some of the things that we have here. Okay, so the things are finally done. As you can see, this is the panning. Unfortunately, I was saying it the opposite way around. When you pan down, actually, let's just go ahead and actually enable that as well. When you pan down, it's gonna show more of the image at the bottom. If you pan up, it's gonna show more images at the top. But again, as you can see, some really amazing uh, visuals that we see here. This is, I don't know, mesmerizing. There's a problem in this particular one when we actually expanded the image. Uh, sometimes when the image is dark or the details aren't as fine, uh, the expansion may not work as you expect. So obviously a better way to expand the actual image would be to use a landscape or whatever size you actually wanna use. Then you basically just go ahead and drop the same thing again. 
use that as both an image as a style reference if you want and then just press enter um, and you can also go ahead and actually choose the stylization to zero so that it really respects the prompts that you've given it and then just see what works so as you can see i'm on the relax mode it's still working pretty fast and working really nice um, and in a few seconds we're going to have what we actually asked it to give us even though we haven't really uh, updated the stylization. So I think that we are going to have certain slight differences, but you can play around with it and you can also decide what you want to do there. <clears throat> okay, so we have something like this. It is definitely different, but yeah, play around with the stylization, play around with the images and try to get what you actually want. Now coming to some of the other images, like for example, this one, if a person wants to generate some images like this, um, what they can do is usually what's really awesome is when you actually go to the explore tab and you go to your likes you have all of these images and the second best thing that you actually have with for example all of these images is this use image as style <clears throat> or the style reference this is what you have as the style reference if you just click on that you can use this particular image as a reference and then you can use uh, this image's style to generate something else very similarly imagine if you had the style reference of this image that would have been awesome as well, right? So it's really helpful if you actually uh, save the images in the Explore tab with different styles that you actually like. So you can use those to generate something else. Like I could have used this to generate the monolith as well. And let's actually, never mind. I think this video is going to get too long, but you get the idea. So that's the idea generally. The other thing I want to talk about is, for example, an image like this. A lot of people were asking me for prompts for this. And if we, let's say, just go ahead and actually use this image. <clears throat> now, using another person's image, in my opinion, should is not ethical because obviously it's his property and then you're using uh, it to generate something else. So at least ask him. Uh, usually most people give permissions. If obviously the variation is very uh, large rather than just copying their image one to one so just ask them if they give you permission to actually use their image as an image reference then go ahead and do that but what you can do for most of these images is you can just paste them into the mid journey bot i think just asking the ai to use or to give you a prompt should maybe be okay i don't know uh, it's still uh, an ethical conundrum uh, i'm not completely sure but i think it's better to be safe and not do it until you actually get permission or at least credit them if you don't get the permission if do, if you obviously if you don't get the permission don't uh, do it if they decline otherwise if they're un unresponsive that's a completely separate thing but let's say if i actually have something like this and if i get the permission to use it i can say i want to use this image as a prompt and a style reference or something and i can just press enter and ideally it's going to give me something very similar to the image that I actually had there and I can start generating things from it as well. Uh, the problem with a lot of people are asking me about like, hey, can you share the prompt? Can you share the prompt? I mean, just ask me if you can use this image as a reference. And once I allow you to do that, you can create pretty stunning visuals like this and then modify them and do whatever it is you want with them. I mean, check these out. These are pretty insane, right? So yeah, I think like that's just what I wanted to point out. Hopefully this gives you a great idea as to how to actually start creating awesome stuff for your web designs, for your UI designs, for your visual design department and take your designs to the next level. That's pretty much it. I'll see you later. Take care. Bye. Oh, wait, on the personalization front, if you click on personalize, you're going to go to a page like this and you can start personalization and you can actually create a mood board here as well. Uh, to show the style that you actually like, you can have these images from somewhere else, or you can actually just start and start ranking your profile. In your profile, it's gonna give you images like this. You're gonna one by one choose which image you actually like. You can do that by pressing one or two to quickly do that, or three to skip. And then you can train uh, Mid Journey to s get an idea of put the type of images that you like. So it's going to tailor the outputs based on your liking. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Do let me know if this video was helpful. And if you actually would want me to go in depth on some of the more advanced thing for mid journey, if I get like, let's say 10,000 likes or sorry, views or something along those lines on this video, then we can definitely consider another video.